The factors which affect glomerular filtration include the driving forces and the filtration coefficient. The driving force mainly includes the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is a force promoting filtration and then there are forces opposing filtration that is the glomerular oncotic pressure and tubular hydrostatic pressure. And the second component that is filtration coefficient includes the characteristics of the capillaries that is how much permeability is and how much is its surface area. So now since uh, these are the forces what we said which affect the glomerular filtration rate. So any factor which affects these forces can affect GFR. But there is a need to maintain glomerular filtration rate in a constant range for effective excretion of the waste products. So if there is any factor which tends to change this GFR, body tries to bring the GFR back into the normal range. Okay, so let's see how this is happening. See, anything which retains blood in these glomerular capillaries will increase the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and hence will increase the GFR. So the mechanisms which uh, tend to change GFR or uh, maintain GFR use this concept where they either increase the blood in capillaries or decrease the retained blood in these capillaries. So first thing is suppose if there is increase in renal plasma flow, there will be increase in GFR. Now remember that uh, flow is equal to pressure upon resistance. So whenever the blood pressure increases or the driving force what we say increases, the flow will increase. Isn't it? So let's take an example say blood pressure, mean blood pressure of body increases. So obviously renal blood flow will also increase. So what will happen? This will tend to cause increase in GFR. So it should be brought back to normal, isn't it? So that is done by changing this resistance. So whenever there is increase in pressure, the mechanisms cause change in this resistance. So what resistance are we talking about? Here we are concerned about renal blood flow. So obviously we are talking about the resistance of the renal vessels which in this case are afferent arterioles and efferent arterioles. See the glomerular capillaries are having arteriole both preceding it which we call afferent arteriole and also following it which we call efferent arteriole. And arterioles have a characteristic that they can contract because their walls are muscular. So when renal blood flow increases there is constriction of these afferent arterioles which in turn cause decrease in renal blood flow because it will offer more resistance to blood flow, isn't it? That will decrease GFR. On the other hand, let's see another uh, factor. Say suppose uh, there is something which can cause efferent arterial constriction. Actually, it's caused by angiotensin, okay? It acts more on the efferent arterial causing its constriction. So if there is efferent arterial constriction, see the resistance of the vessels is increasing. So renal blood flow will decrease. However, because it is affecting the outflow from the glomerular capillaries, more blood will be retained in the glomerular capillaries. This will cause increase in GFR, isn't it? So fundamentally what I am telling is that this uh, renal blood flow and GFR are affected independently by change in these arterial resistance. So let's try to understand this by use of these uh, graphs which are given in books. So in this graph you see x axis shows the afferent arterial resistance and y axis shows a glomerular filtration rate and also renal blood flow. So let's focus on renal blood flow first. See as afferent arterial resistance is increasing what is happening? Renal blood flow is decreasing right and now you see what is happening to GFR? Yes GFR is also decreasing. So whenever afferent arterial resistance increases, renal blood flow decreases. This leads to decrease in glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and hence decrease in GFR. Now let's see the other graph. This graph shows the effect of efferent arterial resistance on the renal blood flow and GFR. See, as efferent arterial resistance is increasing that it is constricting more and more, Renal blood flow is decreasing because ultimately the total vascular resistance of the renal vessels is increasing, right? So blood flow will decrease. But you see what is happening in GFR? Initially there is a rise in GFR, isn't it? This is happening because despite the decrease in incoming due to decrease in the renal blood flow, you see there is also a decrease in the outgoing. 
So the blood is retained in the capillaries itself causing increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. That's why this GFR is increasing initially with increase in the efferent arterial resistance. However, if efferent arterial resistance increases too much, you see the incoming is decreased so much that even the GFR decreases. So why is it important to understand all this? Fundamentally, body regulates glomerular filtration rate basically by changing the afferent and efferent arterial resistance. So again, let's see the example of uh, increase in blood pressure as already told that increase in blood pressure will increase renal plasma flow which will tend to change GFR. But you see in this graph, it shows that within a range of change in blood pressure, GFR is held constant. This range is approximately from 60 millimeter mercury to 140 millimeter mercury of uh, mean arterial blood pressure. So this is known as autoregulation of GFR. So how is this autoregulation of GFR done? Basically, there are mechanisms which operate before filtration and the mechanisms which operate after filtration also. So the mechanism which operate before filtration is known as myogenic mechanism and that operating after filtration is tubuloglomerular feedback. Let's look at them one by one. In myogenic mechanism, what happens that whenever mean arterial blood pressure increases, there will be increased renal blood flow in the arterioles. Now these arterioles have something called stretch sensitive calcium channels. So whenever renal blood flow increases, there is opening of these stretch sensitive calcium channels causing their opening and causing entry of calcium ions. Now these calcium ions cause the constriction of the vascular smooth muscle. So you see it's like a local uh, reflex mechanism operating here. Increase in renal blood flow itself is causing decrease in the diameter of the afferent arteriole and hence increasing the resistance causing decrease in the renal blood flow. So that is the myogenic mechanism. Now second mechanism is the tubuloglomerular feedback. Tubuloglomerular feedback basically acts after filtration and it links the changes in sodium and chloride concentration which happen in the tubules whenever the GFR changes. See if GFR increases more sodium and chloride will also be filtered and if they are filtered more despite their increased reabsorption also more will go further into the tubules. Okay so how this is done? Basically, for understanding this, you should understand the structure of uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus. It is very simple. See, this is the Bowman's capsule. This is the capillary showing the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole. Now, these afferent arterioles are lined by certain cells known as juxtaglomerular cells or JG cells. These cells release renin. Then this portion that is the afferent arteriole, efferent arteriole are in very close contact to the distal tubule. So basically the tubule travels like this and the distal part comes close in contact with this part of the blood vessels. Now this distal tubule has certain cells known as macula densa cells which act as sensors for sodium and chloride. So what happens whenever there is increase in GFR, more sodium and chloride reach to this portion. Now these macula densa cells have a transporter sodium potassium 2 chloride. So they start transporting the sodium and chloride into the cell. Now you know that uh, this uh, transporter acts by secondary active transport. So whenever uh, this transporter is more active, there will be utilization of more energy. So ATP will be hydrolyzed and there will be release of a metabolite known as adenosine. Now this adenosine has a role in tubuloglomerular feedback. What it does is it is released and acts on the basal portion of these macular denser cells uh, on some receptors known as A1 receptors. This causes release of calcium ions from these macular denser cells which go and act on the afferent arteriole causing the constriction of the afferent arteriole. So what has happened? Increase in renal blood flow caused increased GFR. Again, through this uh, tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism, it has lead to constriction of the afferent arteriole. So yes, this, this is a second level of check which is operating. Okay, but uh, apart from this, there is another mechanism also which is inbuilt in this that 
This will also affect the release of the renin from these tetraglomerular cells. So increase in renal blood flow, increase in GFR will cause decrease in the release of the renin. Now you see this renin is responsible for converting angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 which is converted to angiotensin 2 by ACE enzyme in the lungs. This angiotensin 2 has multiple effects. Angiotensin 2 basically causes releases of ADH causing the increase in thirst. Then it also causes release of aldosterone causes vasoconstriction and it causes the constriction of these afferent and efferent arterioles with more effect on this efferent arterioles. So basically by all these mechanisms it is tending to increase blood pressure and by this local effect it will cause increase in GFR right in, because the effect on efferent arteriole is more. So the blood will be retained in the capillary and the, the GFR will increase. So if there is decreased release of renin what we have seen in our drug case these effects will be decreased and hence the GFR will be decreased, isn't it? Okay, so that's the mechanism of autoregulation of GFR. Myogenic mechanism and the tubuloclobular feedback which operates by two ways. One is adenosine and one is renin. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.